The Iran nuclear deal framework known as Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action was a framework agreement reached in 2015 between the Islamic Republic of Iran and a group of permanent members of the United Nations Security Council plus Germany and European Union. That agreement was signed by the USA under Obama presidency, with current president-elect Joe Biden being the vice president at the signing of the agreement. But later, in 2016, after Trump assuming the presidency, backed off from the agreement on the pretext of Iran allegedly breaching the deal. You know, the great American excuse. Now that deal is likely to be revived in the near future as the deal was actually signed when Joe Biden was the vice president and he has signaled his intent to return to the deal. However, the carefully crafted and well-executed assassination of Iranian nuclear scientist Mohsin Fakhrizadeh soon after it became clear that Biden had beaten Trump in the US presidential election was actually intended to stall such a revival plan that Benjamin Netanyahu is dead set against. The consistent American pressure on Iranian economy that resulted in the inflation shooting up the sky. The assassination of Qasim Soleimani, who was the second most powerful man in Iran. And later, the assassination of Iranian nuclear scientist Mohsin Fakhrizadeh have stalked the strong anti-American sentiment across Iran. And in return, the seizure of South Korean tanker in the Persian Gulf by Iranian forces and the Iran breaching the nuclear deal by enriching uranium to 20% much above the allowed limit of just 4% that is sufficient for nuclear power plants. Basically, uranium enrichment below 4% is sufficient to generate nuclear energy and that is allowed by the International Atomic Energy Agency for civilian use. But uranium enrichment beyond 20% clearly indicates that the subject country is developing a nuclear weapon, in this case, Iran. These are basically the Persian way of telling the West that Iran will only go back on the deal if all signatories, mainly the United States, come into compliance. These Iranian tactics are designed to pressurize incoming Biden presidency to quickly rejoin the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action on terms previously agreed upon. But yes, there is a big but involved here as well. Israel and Saudi Arabia would be batting to set something off to scuttle the deal as both the Saudi Arabia and Israel see Iran as the biggest threat to their hegemony in the West Asia. But does it have any fallout for India? Well, of course, yes. How come there can't be any? Actually, if the nuclear deal between Iran and the West falls through, then Iran will be lost to the West as the European powers are looking for a consistent source for the supply of natural gas that Iran has plenty of. As of now, the Western European countries import natural gas from Russia and that prevents them from actively speaking against the Russian aggressions. And that is particularly true in the case of Germany. And these Western European powers want to reduce their dependence on the Russian natural gas that has made them more vulnerable to Russian terms and conditions. And India previously imported major chunk of its natural gas from Iran and Iran too agreed to supply the gas in exchange of rupee payments instead of dollars as Iran didn't have any other option available and the United States didn't allow dollars to be used for the trade with Iran. But last year, India had to stop the import of natural gas from Iran under the great American pressure. But if this nuclear deal falls through, then Iran will have lots of options available to export its natural gas besides India. Hence, Indian importance to Iran would diminish a bit. Another biggest repercussion for India will be the Chinese rushing in to fill the vacuum and securing cheap energy supplies for the expansion of its Belt and Road Initiative, as well as acquiring a useful ally in the Middle East. China and Iran have already reached a $400 billion trilateral partnership, which includes constructing a railway line from the port of Chaba to Zidane on the Afghan border. Well, let me tell you clearly that this railway line was originally supposed to be constructed by India. So it's a big loss for India and a big gain for China. Well, does it mean that India becomes an outright loser if Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action falls through? Well, the answer is clearly yes, but there will still be some chess pieces left for India to play. One outcome of China-Iran-Pakistan alliance will be that US forces currently hanging on in Afghanistan will almost surely be squeezed out which will also disable Islamabad from using their security as a bargaining chip with the USA. 
Second, if geopolitic rivalry steps in the Middle East, then reaction to Iran that is powerful and potentially armed with nuclear weapons and backed by China is inevitable. The state realignments among the major Arab states are already visible, with the UAE and Bahrain normalizing ties with Israel and Crown Prince Salman of Saudi in his quest to modernize the Saudi economy and to diversify it away from crude oil, basically to become the Saudi Arabia's Deng Xiaoping have sought active support of India and Israel. Saudi Arabia and Qatar gave cold shoulder to Pakistan over its efforts to kick up a dust storm over India's constitutional changes in Kashmir. And this failed effort by Pakistan led to a significant rift between Saudi Arabia and Pakistan and India, which already has significant equities in the Gulf. A sudden visit of General Narwane to Saudi being first of such kind of an Indian army general in history already shows sign of Asian geopolitic reshuffling. Face-off between the alliance of China, Pakistan, Iran, Turkey versus USA, India, Israel, Arab countries and Europe has kicked off a dust storm in the Gulf. Although India and Iran from both the sides of geopolitical alliances have good relationship, and Indian investment in Chabar is quite critical for both the countries, both strategically as well as economically. It will be interesting to see what future holds for this Indo-Iranian relationship in near future. But this joint comprehensive plan of action might provide some relief to Indian investment in Iran, as India has lately been under consistent American pressure to withdraw from Chabar. This fall through for joint comp comprehensive plan of action might provide some breathe of fresh air to India.